Oh my gosh, the graft you, that's crazy. Hi guys, I missed you so much. I haven't seen you guys in like a week. It might even be a little longer than a week. It's been ridiculous. Anyways, um, I'm at work, if you couldn't tell. Um, I tried doing this video once before, but a customer came in, so I'm doing it again, which a customer will probably come in again, but that's okay, because that's what I'm here for. I figure if I can get this done and uploaded before I get home, then that would be awesome. If I can't, I'll just wait till I get home. It's not a big deal. Um, but I do have a super sweet story that I wanted to tell you guys about, which is my whole point for doing this. Um, it happened this past weekend into a little bit of this week, and I am just so excited and honored by the whole thing that I really wanted to share it with you guys. Um, and you guys, actually a lot of you helped me out too on Facebook, which I'll explain that. But I'm going to tell you what happened, tell you the end result, and then I'm going to play the Tarantino game and go back to the beginning, explain how I figured it all out, and then give you the significant breakdown of each thing afterwards. So I'm going to try not to make this very long, but I just can't cut parts out because it's just awesome. So I really hope that the TV that's going on is not bugging you guys. I, I'm not sure how loud it ends up being on my phone, so I apologize for that. Um, anyways, okay, so this past week slash weekend, it was like sa Saturday night into Monday, because I think we figured it out Monday night. Um, I was contacted by the goddess Eponia. It's E-P-O-N-A, and I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, but Eponia sounds right to me, so that's how I'm going to say it. Um, she is the, she is known primarily as the goddess of horses. She's also been known as the goddess of, a goddess of fertility and abundance, and overall, um, I mean, her, her main thing is, is horses, but she is also known as the goddess of any kind of human companion animals. So um, she's been depicted with horses, with dogs. Um, you could, you know, put cats or any, pretty much any animal that can be used as a human companion. Um, she is very nurturing, very loving. She has a very motherly feel to her, which is completely different, like, total polar opposite from my current matron goddess, which is uh, Hecate. So, now that you know what happened, let me go back and explain how this all went down. Now, um, this past weekend, Kevin and I went camping, and up there is the Gichigumi Rock Shop, which I've been, this is my second time going, and that's where I've been able to find a lot of bigger pieces that they sell for pretty cheap. Um, that she goes and mines herself or gets herself, so it's awesome. And I have been searching frantically for a large piece of malachite. Now, I have a couple smaller pieces that I got from Sam's shop, um, but I've wanted a big piece. And last time we were there, she had a couple, like, bigger pieces. And we got there, and I couldn't find any. And I was really bummed out. So I'm looking around, and Kevin, because he's super tall, found two pieces of malachite on the top shelf of something that I just couldn't see. And he grabbed it and he said, Krista, check this out. And whenever he wants to, you know, whenever he finds something he think I might like, he puts it in my hands um, so that I can feel it. And as soon as I felt this piece, it was over. I mean, it was like, I, I didn't put it down until I got home Monday, and this was Friday that I found it. I mean, I took that piece everywhere with me, in the car, to bed, um, on road trips. Like, that piece was with me all the time. And I have it with me, so let me show you. I named it O'Malley. So, this is my big piece. It's got, it's got like, actual, and I use them as, like, little like finger pockets to hold it but, and you can kind of see a little face there. See it? There's two eyes and a nose and a mouth. And then there's the back of it. So this is my, this is my big malachite piece and I love it so much. Okay, so, that is where this all started. I got a piece of malachite and took it everywhere with me. Okay, so Saturday night, um, it was storming and we were in a tent and our tent was leaking, and so I was in a bad mood, and found the malachite, put it next to me, 
um, ended up falling asleep at like one o'clock in the morning and I had just the most ridiculously vivid dreams I knew that it was because of the malachite because I'd never slept with malachite before and I I mean these dreams were just so realistic and most of the time and I don't know what you guys about you guys but when I dream I, I know I'm dreaming but this was just so vivid and the one that stuck out to me the most and it it's haunted me to, to now so like for a week now um, it had to do with horses and I'm not going to get into it because I, I do kind of view it as kind of like a nightmare I mean it was very haunting but there was a very sick dying horse in the dream and then a very strong new white mare or horse um, and like I said I'm not going to go into details about the dream but the point is I dreamed about horses and horses have never been a big thing to me. I mean, I think they're pretty. I've, I've rode them before, but it's never been an animal that I've had some kind of an affinity with. So when I woke up, I told Kevin the whole story of the dream, and I was just like, I can't shake it. Like, there's just something about this dream that means something. And if you guys have ever had a dream or something happen to you to where you're like, okay, this has some significance in it, you, I mean, you just know. So I had this, this dream. And after that, so it was Sunday was was the morning that I woke up with Sunday morning we were heading home that day and this is when everything started happening so I had the horse dream that night um, the next day we're driving home and I'm plastered on the side of a car and I mean it wasn't even like professionally done it just looked like somebody like took a big old sticker and just put it on the passenger side door of a car we passed this car and there's a big white horse on it just like randomly on this piece of shit looking car and I'm like, holy crap, there's another horse. We pass a horse farm, which I didn't notice. I don't even, I mean, I'm sure it was there. There's not just randomly a horse farm, but we pass a horse farm on the way home. Um, we end up going to, it's called the book stop in town. And they're going out of business. So we get there and we find um, a book in the New Age section that... I mean, it shouldn't have been there. It was in New Age, and it was. I had a big picture of a white horse on the front, and it was called I Love Horses. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> what is going on? So I'll come back to the, to the bookshop because there's something else there too. But um, also when I got home, like ever since that dream, and once we got home and then into Monday, I was like, we have to go to a, uh, a human... Why can I? Humane Society. There we go. We have to go to Humane Society. We have to adopt a kitten. And he's like, where is this coming from? Because I've been wanting a, a kitten for a while. I've got patches, and, and I think that a kitten would do him some good. It would get him up, get him around, and he'd have somebody to play with while we're gone. But this was just like this, ur like this urgent need. Like, I have to go get a kitten right now. I have to go save a kitten. I have to go to the Humane Society. I've got to adopt. I was like, I don't want to go and randomly find somebody whose cat had kittens. Like, I have to go to a Humane Society. I have to save a kitten. Like, it was just like this primal need. <laughs> um, so, that happened. We ended up going to the Humane Society. Didn't end up getting a kitten. And that's all part of the story, too. But, um, so, we also, at the bookshop, there was a, a section where they had, because they were going out of business, um, books for a dollar. And there was one book, I don't even remember what else was there, that Kevin was just like, bam, snatched. And it was called 365 Days of Goddess. And every day there's a different goddess. It tells you her background um, and then gives you a little bit of like a, a ritual or something to do to honor her. And he's like, hey, check this out. And I'm like, sweet, uh, yeah, I need this. Like as soon as I saw it, I'm like, yeah, we have to have this. It's a buck. So uh, Monday? I think it was Monday. It was Tuesday. I don't remember. It was one of those days. It might have been might have been Tuesday. Um, I posted on Facebook and I said, okay guys, what the hell is going on? I'm seeing horses everywhere. They're in my dreams. They're on cars. They're in bookstores. Like, I, and there's a significance to them. I know that something's going on. So what, what are horses? What do they mean? And because I would rather have other people's opinions than look it up online. Um, so a couple people had said, well, it could be your totem animal. I'm like, okay, I get it. That makes sense. You know, I, like I said, I don't really have this affinity for horses, but you know, maybe. 
And then I had a couple other people, which I think one of them was Melanie, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, said, well, maybe it could be Eponia. And I was like, I, as soon as I saw the name, it was just like, j it just clicked. I saw it and I was like, I don't even know what this is, but I need to know. It was just like a, it was so right. And then she posted another thing and said, you know, um, I'm not talking about the horse in Legend of Zelda, because I'm a video game nerd. I'm talking about the goddess. She's the goddess of horses. So I start, I mean, I just delve into research. And I told Kevin, and I'm like, look, you may sound, this may sound stupid, but, you know, this is everything that happened. We kind of recapped everything. And I'm like, I think this is a pony trying to get a hold of me. So we start doing research, and we start, you know, reading into her and just... Everything that we read was just so dead on. And, you know, we start thinking back and we're like, man, this she could have been trying to get a hold of me forever. And, I mean, with Hecate, when I read over her name for the first time, it, it was just like, I had this... Hold on a minute. I really have to answer this and I really don't want to restart this video. Thank you for calling GameStop. I was like 11 minutes in, I didn't want to pause it, and I said I'm at work. Okay, so, uh, now that you guys probably heard where I work, which if you didn't know anyway, I don't really care. Okay, so, I'm so sorry, so, so sorry. Anyways, so, we start thinking back about what had been going on, and we're like, okay, so I had to have this piece of malachite. Um, you know, I've been looking for a big piece forever. No idea why, I've just always had this, this love for Malachite. So we start looking into the Crystal Bible about what Malachite actually is, and there was a lot of things that really clicked, and one of the big things was it's excellent for, um, for chakra work with your third eye, because it really helps with, um, with psychic visions, um, with visual, visual, visualization, and with spiritual guidance, which I was like, well, there you go. I slept with the Malachite and had this ridiculous dream about horses, which was a pony trying to get a hold of me. Bam. So, Malachite. Got the Malachite, had the dream. After I had the dream, I ended up seeing horses everywhere. Um, Aponia is huge, like I had said at the beginning, is huge when it comes to animal companionship um, and human, you know, human companions. So I get home, and what do I want to do? I instantly want to go to the animal shelter and adopt a kitten. Why? Because her energy was probably, um, you know, around and just getting me all fired up. And if her, if that's the kind of energy that she has and that she promotes. That's where that came from because I didn't end up getting a kitten because we were denied because we we live in an apartment and even though we have a cat we're not really supposed to have one and so the lady called our landlord to see if we could have a kitten and they were like no and she goes oh well they already have one oh well we didn't know they have one but we never got in trouble for it so you know they never came and knocked on our door and said oh you guys have a cat you have to get rid of it blah 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 it was just a no, Krista, you don't actually need a kitten. It was just the energy of the goddess, at least that's what I believe, um, that was around you that made you, you know, that's what she's all about. So um, so there was that. And then at the bookstore, the 365 Days of Goddess, I'd never heard of a pony before. She was in there on June 13th, which um, the month of June was big for us anyway, but anything with 13, and I don't know if that has to do with a lot of you guys too, but 13 
the number 13 in general has huge significances for me all the time. So whenever there's 13 in anything, 13 and 9 are my two huge numbers. Um, so there was that, and I mean, it's just, it's, and I mean, you guys, okay, so there's three different goddesses. There's, I think there's a few more than that, but upon my research, I noticed that Aponia is also known as Rhiannon and Maka, it's M-A-C-H-A, in different cultures, um, and they're all depicted with horses. They all have changed their meanings a little bit, but they're all depicted with horses. So for you guys to say Aponia instead of the other two, um, you know, because once I read about them, I didn't really feel anything with the other two. It was a pony that was just like, bam, hi, I'm here, listen to me. Um, so, you know, the fact that you guys mentioned her instead of the other ones. Um, Kevin had also mentioned, too, and I mean, he is just so amazing for, I mean, he just delved right into this with me. And he had said, sorry, I think he just texted me, so my phone went off. Um, he had said, you know, Krista, you had been with Hecate for so long, but for, okay, I'm never going to go into it, but I have had some shit go on in my life that nobody should ever have to deal with. Um, and during that time, Hecate was an amazing goddess to have with me because of her strength and her courage. And I had a lot of decisions to make. I had some very, very hard decisions to make. And she is the goddess of the crossroads. She's the goddess to light the way for you to help you make certain decisions. Um, she's the crone, so she's she's a hard ass. I mean, she's not there to hold your hand to, you know, I mean, she's there to teach you lessons. She's like, look, if you need me, obviously give me a shout. I'll try to help you out. But she tries to make you... Um, figure out stuff on your own and learn from your own mistakes rather than being a motherly nurturing type, you know what I mean? Um, she's very wise, that type of thing. Okay, you know what, I'm going to answer this in a minute. So, um, she, Kevin was like, you know, maybe since now you're in a better place, you're with me, you're in an apartment, you're happy, you've got your store going on, maybe you don't need the energies of Hecate like you did, but instead you need the more motherly, nurturing type goddess, and that's where Aponia's coming in. You know, she's getting a hold of you, and she's like, hey, you need me. I've got all kinds of stuff to offer from you. Just listen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I just, and you guys may be like, Krista, you are, you are absolutely crazy, but I don't believe in coincidences, and for all of this to happen, especially when you use your intuition and your gut and you know that something's coming out of something, I mean, it's just... 